Welcome each and every one of you that uh, attend the program today. Um, have a good crowd. It's always great to see everyone here. I want to mention to you that uh, we have a lot of special guests. Everybody's special. But I'd like to take a moment and recognize a couple of the officials that help support the town and our programs through the Veterans Center. First, I'd like to, to uh, introduce and welcome the mayor of the town of James Island, Bill Woosley. Bill, will you raise your hand to my right? We have Don Marilla, the director of the Veterans Center. Don, I know you're in there somewhere. <laughs> We're fortunate to have a number of other posts participate. We have the DAV commander, I gather. And I also want to, I want to welcome each and every one of you, uh, beginning, of course, with any of the older veterans. If you've got anybody here from World War I, please raise your hand. All right. <laughs> okay, any World War II people? All right, that's right. Yeah, but we, I think we've lost all our World War I. God bless them all. Um, anybody from Korea? I would remember my daddy from Korea. That's right. Remember that. Korea, thank you. Anybody from the uh, Vietnam era? Please. That's good. And all, all the other wars, I mean, it's a shame we've got so many. we got uh, Desert Storm, Iraqi Freedom, uh, all of you guys, everyone in the, all of the branches, we thank you for your service, thank you for being here, and everyone especially that came to honor them. I bless you all. And I'm going to ask if you have a cell phone or anything that will go off, please be kind enough as we go through the program to turn it down to airplane mode or, or cut it off, if you would, please. Now we'd like to invite our chaplain, Bill Farmer, to give the invocation. Come, please. Can we pray? Almighty God, creator and sustainer of life, we come before you this Memorial Day in prayer in remembrance of our military active duty and veterans who gave of themselves so selfishly. We remember them for their friendship, their bravery, and their faithfulness to duty. May we enjoy your everlasting peace and love. May we never forget the brave men and women who made the supreme sacrifice in their efforts to give us peace. Bless and comfort to their beloved ones and friends and renew in them the courage which comes from faith in you. Bless also the ones here today who come to honor our friends have given of themselves throughout the ages. Help us through the pain. Surround us with the golden light of healing. Fill us with the white light of peace and love. Help us to bear the pain as we go through these memories. Help us to cry. Help us to remember. And dear Lord, above all, help us to love ourselves no, what ha no matter what happens in the days of our lives. Amen. 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 Please remain uncovered through the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, the POW MIA presentation. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll have POW MIA presentation. Honor Guard advance in position of prisoner of war, missing an action flag for the ceremony.
this symbol serve as a reminder that we must never diminish our efforts to gain the freedom and safe return of those still living and the return of the remains of full accounting of those who have perished. So let us renew our resolve in striving for full accounting of all of the missing. May they know through our efforts that truly they are not forgotten. Everyone, please be seated. Get my cover back on here. All righty. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our guests, our speakers. I'll give a more I'll give a more detailed uh, introduction by our, our guest speaker of the day. But I'd like to start beginning, introduce for the veterans of foreign wars, VFW Post 445, the current commander Johnny Colley. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow veterans, guest speaker Buddy Milligan, I thank all of you for coming here today. We're here to salute all of those who have given their lives in defense in this great nation of ours. Without their sacrifices, we would not be free to ask questions, challenge our political leaders, and to take an active role in our system of government. To them, we owe an unrepayable debt. The United States was born and founded from the blood and ashes of war. This weekend, let's not lose sight why we observe this day of remembrance and honor. Let's take a moment to remember our fallen heroes, past and present, and the families they left behind. To give thanks to the heroes of today, for truly there is no greater privilege to humanity than to be free. Remember our troops in your thoughts and prayers, no matter where they are, stateside or abroad. God bless America, God bless our troops, and God bless our fellow veterans. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce the VFW Ladies Auxiliary from Post 445, Miss Nancy Wolf. I'd like to also thank everyone for coming out today on this Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a day to reflect, to give thanks, and to remember all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, who served this great nation of ours, and who died while serving this great nation of ours, the United States of America. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the American Legion and Commander Cargyle for opening their doors to us today and sponsoring this event so we could all come together in honor and remembrance. Thank you. Memorial Day is a day for remembering all of the brave men and women who have died while serving our country. It's a day to commemorate and honor these Americans. Today is a day to remember and never forget. Memorial Day is a day to honor. It's not a day of mourning. It's a day of solemn observance, a day of tribute. This is just one day out of the year where we can say thank you. There have been many different wars across many different eras, but one thing remains the same, the courage and the willingness of the American soldier to lay down his or her life for freedom and liberty. Thank you for our, your service to our country. Thank you for serving with honor, 
with pride, with loyalty, and with dedication. And thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you to the men and women who over the years, the generations have made this sacrifice, not only to their country, but to their families, the families that they've left behind. And thank you to the troops that are still coming home. We as a nation must take care of our own and we must not leave anyone behind. The wind is blowing my papers. President Kennedy once said, a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. So today we remember and honor the American soldiers, ordinary men and women who died while in military service. Today, when you see a soldier, see loyalty, see duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and courage. Again, I say thank you. Please remember and never forget, God bless our troops and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Melody Lowe. She's the president of Auxiliary Unit 147 of our post. Melody. Good morning, and thank you to everyone who came out here today. We, the Auxiliary, would like to extend our thanks to all the veterans for the sacrifices they have given so that we may enjoy the freedom that we have today. I want to tell you a little history story. The image of the poppy as a memorial flower to the war dead can be traced back as far back as November 1918, when a woman named Mona Michael asked businessmen where she worked to wear the poppy as a tribute to the fallen. In 1923, the poppy became the official flower of the American Legion family in memory of the soldiers who fought the in the battlefield in World War I. On May 2, 1915, a young friend and former student of Colonel John McRae was killed by a shell burst. He was buried later that day in a nearby cemetery with Colonel McRae performing the ceremony in the absence of the chaplain. This death particularly affected Colonel McRae. And the next day, while sitting in the back of an ambulance, Colonel McRae could see the wild poppies that were blowing all over the nearby cemetery. He spent 20 minutes scribbling 15 lines of verse that would later become in Flanders Field. I would like to read this poem of the poppies to you now. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our places in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scared herd amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago we lived Belt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from flailing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders field. Thank you. Now I have the great pleasure of introducing one of our folks. Most of us around here have known Buddy a long time. William M. Milligan III, give you a little bio on him. He was born May 4th, 1942 in Charleston, South Carolina. He was educated at the public schools. He graduated from high school of Charleston in 1960, majoring in sports and girls. <laughs> he graduated as a Dean's List student from the College of Charleston in 1965 and he joined the United States Marine Corps in October of 1965. He was commissioned a second lieutenant in March 1966 at Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. He entered flight training in Pensacola, Florida. He joined the all-weather attack squadron, uh, all-weather at 225 in March of 1967. He spent one year training for Vietnam. He arrived at Chun Lai, Vietnam, March of 1968 during the Tet Offensive. Then he joined the, the Assault, all-weather 533. He flew 104 missions over North Vietnam and 97 close air support for missions in nine months. His decorations include the Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Medal with three gold stars, Bronze Star, Vietnamese Honor Medal, First Class, highest award given to a foreign national by the South Vietnamese government. 
the present unit citation in the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry, and he achieved the rank of captain in 1968. I don't know I can say any more for that man except come on up here and speak to us. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Fogel. Fellow Legionnaires, families, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to address you on this important day. I know it is quite warm and I will be brief. Memorial Day began in 1868 when a former Union General, John A. Logan, called for a nationwide day of remembrance for the soldiers on both sides who lost their lives in the war between the states. It became an official holiday by an act of Congress in 1968. It took effect in 1971, making Memorial Day a federal holiday. Unfortunately, that is all it is to most Americans. Most of the people you see driving down Folly Road to Folly Beach are completely oblivious to the meaning of this day. To them, it is the final day of a long weekend of partying. To dedicated veterans and their families gathered here today and in many like events throughout our country, the day holds a different, different, more solemn meaning to those who have been in combat and lost close friends. It is even more significant. I had just returned from a bombing run over North Vietnam. It was 0300 on the morning of May the 4th, 1968. I passed my best friend in the Marine Corps on his way to his aircraft to fly the same type of mission. We had been commissioned together. We had gone through flight school together. We lived next door to each other with our wives in Florida. His name was Robert Douglas Avery from Morgantown, North Carolina. We had a little small talk and joked around like we always did. As he walked away, for some reason, I looked back and watched him whistling in the dark. He was a fun, loving fellow. I never saw Doug again. He was shot down that early morning. He never came home in a body bag because there was nothing left to send. In fact, they never found the wreckage until years later. It was incidentally, that day, my 26th birthday. When one ponders wars, the first thing that comes to mind is the greatest generation. The men who came from farms and factories, enlisted in droves after the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. Women auxiliaries were formed in every branch of service. They were all products of the Great Depression, a hardy bunch. Not enough can be said about these combat veterans in Europe and the Pacific. In many cases, they, were, they never saw home for four long years. But my, in my opinion, however, any generation that answered the call to defend their country is a great generation as well. Acts of heroism and sacrifice have occurred in every war, from the Revolution to World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. In a letter to the editor, just this weekend, General John Rose, President of the Citadel, wrote, and I quote, it is startling to realize that one, that less than 1% of our population make up 100% of the sacrifices to keep our nation safe and free. That is why 
When I see a young man or woman in uniform, I thank them for their service. When I see an older gentleman with a baseball hat that signifies what war they fought in, I do the same. I thank them for their service. Their smiles are gratifying. And let us never forget those who made the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives so that we who survive can enjoy the freedom and prosperity of this great country. That is what this day is about. In closing, I would like to say, I'm proud to be a Charleston boy, born and bred. I'm proud to be a legionnaire, and most of all, I am proud to be called a United States Marine. God bless America! Ooh, that's a hard act to follow, I'll tell you what. Thank you for your service, buddy. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, and I'll tell you, We'll share some more thoughts with you about a couple of things that happened yesterday. But now let's move on to the places of the Memorial Reefs, starting with the Army being represented by Harold Blum. place in the reef for the Marines is Rudy Smith. Now the reef of the Navy is Bill Wade. Now for the Air Force, Sid Sellers. Sid had an unexpected emergency. Rudy Smith will carry out for the Air Force.
And lastly, for the Coast Guard, John Rogers. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remain standing while the honor guard renders honors with a rifle salute, the sounding of the taps, the national anthem, and the raising of colors.
ladies and gentlemen. You can be seated, please. I'll just take a couple of quick moments to uh, for closing remarks. I want to thank our guest speaker, Buddy Milligan, did a great job. Wow, he's quite a bit honored to have him here. Thank you. And I'll say this too, uh, it's always important. What I've noticed is we've been very fortunate here on the island to have so many people show up for this service. And I've gone to many of them. I went to one yesterday, I looked around at a much smaller audi audience, but there were a lot of tears. And these, most of those people there were from members that had been injured or lost to the wars. This is really special to remember people like this. And unfortunately, as it were, it looks like we're going to have wars from now on. And every time we get weaker, we end up having a bigger war. So I just pray for our country. We better pray for those politicians and thank God for all the young men and all the oldest that have put everything they have, their lives. They come back with limbs missing, tore up because of PTSD and a lot of other things. And it's hard. But I will say to you, you're a real testament to appreciation of all those soldiers, airmen, folks, everybody that had a part in it. And also, I, before I have the uh, benediction for the chaplain and way of blessed food, I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every person who had a part in this. Of course, you, the guests, and all the veterans, Honor Guard, the, the Public Service System, the firemen that came, and go. <laughs> and also, uh, for everyone that pre prepared food, the VFW, our ladies, our staff, and I really appreciate, too, our soloists, Bubba Lee Max, the honor guard with the bugler, playing the taps, and and also the audio support that we got from uh, Bob Oswald and Craig Orberg. Having said all that, I appreciate you. We love all of you. We love our veterans. This great country. Chaplain, if you'll come up and give us a benediction and bless the food. And I will say, if you if you will, please. And as we end up in the service, please allow the guest speaker and his family to go first, then allow emergency personnel to go second, because they have to answer calls, and then also have handicapped follow them, and everybody else, please join in. So I bless you all, and thank you for coming. Every hour, rise and cover for benediction, please. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. Guard our homes, our churches, our entire land and all therein from harm and destruction. Preserve the integrity of this nation, founded on religious principles, by protecting it from all enemies within and without. And dear Lord, we thank you for those who have prepared the meal for us, for those here in attendance today. Bless this meal to the nourishment of our bodies. And now may the good Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Please, please help us with the food. Enjoy it. Thank you.